Dr. Shabir, welcome to Let the Quran Speak. Pleasure to be on. I want to talk about the Tablighi Jamaat. They're a movement that aims to call Muslims, followers, back to the faith. And there are millions of followers all over the world, mostly in Southeast Asia. Dr. Shabir, can you tell me a little bit about what the goals of this movement is? The, the goals um, are, are actually identified in, in six points, which are regularly preached. Um, but, but if we summarize those six points, we can say that the overall goal is to make Muslims better Muslims. Mm -hmm. and, and the thought is that, uh, behind the movement, is that, uh, look, Muslims as they are now, uh, we can see that um, Muslims overall, as, as a global community, as an ummah, uh, do not have that kind of status and glory that we used to have in the past. So how can we recover that glory? Some people think it's by going into politics and getting political power and imposing Islam as a way to be followed and so on. But this movement it takes a different approach and says, no, even if you have political power, if you don't have people who are sincerely devoted to the faith, like what are they going to impose with their political power? It won't be Islam, it'll be something else. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, to them, the most important thing is to develop the individual, make, make the individual Muslims good human beings. Mm -hmm. uh, devoted, so spiritual development. Spiritual development, okay. yes. Uh, make them sincere to the faith and uh, good servants of God. And then if they get political power, then they will be able to implement political power for the benefit of humankind according to the dictates of God. Otherwise, you give them political power, they'll misuse it. Mm -hmm. So uh, to, to them, the main thrust and, and, and the, the, the unwavering focus is on the spiritual development of Muslims. Uh, to say it in Arabic, is Islah al So how do they focus on that spiritual development? What do they do? So I mentioned the six points. So l let me just elaborate on that, and that will explain a, a, a lot of what. So, so the six points that they always emphasize in their preaching and in, and in everything is that first, that uh, we must uh, get a clear conception of uh, and, and attachment to uh, the, the, for, the pronouncement of faith uh, uh, that makes a person Muslim. Uh, that's simply put is the kalima of Islam, which says there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God. So we should be thoroughly committed to that. We're not going to worship anyone other than God. We're going to be intensely devoted to God. And also, we're going to follow the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because just simply pronouncing that he's the messenger of God is not the end of the matter. Uh, by making that official pronouncement that makes a person a Muslim, uh, we are actually committing ourselves to re re you know, act as if he's the messenger of God. So he brought a message from God for us to follow and practice. So we should follow him as an example that was set from God as a human being for us to follow. So that's the first point. The second point is the prayers. Uh, the daily prayers for, of Muslims, according to them, this uh, is of paramount importance, trumping all other obligations. And we may as well get this one right. And if we get this one right, then uh, other things will fall into place. So be sincerely devoted in your prayers. Uh, do them on time, regularly, without fail. Uh, do them in the mosque if you have the opportunity to do so, and so on. This is all emphasized. And then have sincerity and devotion within the prayer itself. A person may be praying here, but his mind is wandering all over the place. Uh, be devoted in, in the prayer. So that's the second point. The third point is actually a combination of two points, which they say go hand in hand. Uh, and um, one is ilm, the knowledge, and the other is dhikr, or remembrance of God. They say that the two are like two wings, and you need both to fly. Uh, so if somebody has knowledge of the religion, but they don't have the attachment to God, then that knowledge can get them puffed up with pride. That mm -hmm. would be harmful to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they have the remembrance of God, they're attached to God, they want to please God in every way, but they don't have the knowledge, they may do something wrong thinking that they're going to please God thereby. So you need both to balance it out, the proper knowledge and the attachment uh, to God going hand in hand. Mm -hmm. That, that, so that's the third point, which is a combination of two. And the fourth point, they say, uh, is that we should honor other Muslims. They call this Ikram al-Muslimin. And uh, of course, we should all honor all human beings as Muslims. But there is a particular emphasis within this movement to uh, honor Muslims because they are your first uh, call. Mm -hmm. uh, they are, you know, this is where the charity begins at home. If you can't be good to your fellow Muslims, how can you be good to anyone else? Uh, so, so uh, you know, recognize the value of Muslims. These are people who, like you, are saying uh, the kalima of Islam, there's no God but God, Muhammad is the messenger of God, these are dear to God. As long as a person remains saying Allah, Allah, the God will keep the universe in establishment. Um, 
Uh, so you see how valuable the human being is, uh, the Muslim in particular. So honor the Muslim, uh, respect and serve other Muslims. And uh, the fifth point is they say is tashih uh, al correcting the intention. Uh, one might be doing a lot of good work, might, one might be giving charity, but he wants to do this for show. Um, don't do it for show, do it for the pleasure of God. And always keep correcting your intention, whatever good deed you're doing. Check yourself at the beginning. Am I going to do? Am I going to do this for the God, for, for the sake of God? Check yourself in the middle. Did my intention change in somewhere in between? Did Satan cause me to um, veer from the right path, and suddenly I'm in, I'm doing it for my own sake, for my own name and fame and personal glory? Uh, and then check yourself at the end as well. After you've done everything, you know, don't say, "Okay, I've done a good job there," but ask yourself, "Did you really do it for the pleasure of God?" So this is emphasized a lot check your intention and correct it uh, you know, along the way. Finally, uh, the sixth point is that uh, you should um, set aside time, dedicate time uh, to learn and preach the religion, mm. uh, to, to learn, uh, to, to develop your own self, really. Um, so, so this entails going out in what they call going out in the way of, of Allah, to use the Arabic term. Um, and, and that would entail that you are giving at least 10% of, uh, of all intervals of time. So uh, in a day, you might want to spend two and a half hours. Uh, you've done your daily routines. You've gone to work eight hours in the day. You've looked after your family and all of that. So two and a half hours, go to the mosque and see how you can serve the mission uh, from, by, in, within this two and a half hours uh, time. Uh, three, uh, three days within a month. Of course, it's piling up, so it's now becoming 20%, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, three days in a month is 10%, two and a half uh, hours each day is already more than 10%, so it's a combined, right, uh, mm -hmm. overlapping. Mm -hmm. um, so, but, but three days within a month, you, you go away, you can leave your family, your business, and all of that. You're going to go, as they say, in the way of God, and, uh, and you're going to be, during this, these three days, you're going to be developing yourself, um, immersing in, in worship and reading the Quran and also in preaching the, the, the message to other people. And uh, uh, finally, uh, or not necessarily finally, but penultimately, um, uh, 40 days in every year. So, you know, uh, 40 days times 10 would have been 400. So that's at least 10%. And um, uh, then uh, at least once in a, in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one should go for four, four months altogether. So in a four months stretch, uh, one, they say, would have a life-changing experience. Uh, you would be firmly then placed on the mission. You would have now everything you know, clear to you uh, as a result of spending uh, the four months all at once. Uh, detached from all of your worldly commitments, your job and all of that, but you've gone out in a kind of a sabbatical. I should add that you know my, my this idea of ten percent is my own take. I've, okay. uh, you know, I, I should I, and and maybe this is a good point at which I can mention that the, the mission is dear to me because I, I am actually one of the products of, of that mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I I used to go out, but I didn't do the four the four months. Okay. Um, and and what I did, I didn't do so very well. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, may God forgive me for that. But um, so what you did know, you what, what did you learn from that experience? Well, there are a lot of good things that uh, I, I learned from that. Um, you know, one, one thing that I hope I still carry is, is humility. In, in the mission, um, like no one as a, as a preacher, like I spoke about these six points. You can see I was able to almost rattle them yes. off because even <laughs> though it's been, <laughs> it's been decades now, but uh, I mean, I had a refresher, but, but still, um, uh, I spoke about it many times, but you know, when as part of that mission and its work, no speaker is introduced. Uh, nobody comes to the beginning and say, you know, I'm the a master of ceremonies and I'm not going to introduce you this great speaker. Because the, the idea in the mission is that, oh, God is great and we're going to celebrate the greatness and glory of God, not the glory of any individual. We're not going to say that here it is this great person. The person doesn't matter. What matters is the message and it's the message about God and God matters. I think so, I was reading also that like, people have different responsibilities and, and these responsibilities change and it could be like someone could cook and someone could serve and someone would do something else and, and those are shared and that same cook could, could be the one standing up to advise the rest of the congregation about something, right? Exactly, exactly. Now you have asked me, you know, what, 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 what do they do? So, uh, I'm, uh, you know, and I got caught up with the six points, but I, uh, if we have time, I, I will mention that, uh, you know, when we went out, like for the three days, so what would we do in the three days? So in the three days uh, in, within the month, 
uh, we would go out to, to another community. We would go and stay in a mosque, and that would be our living quarters for the three days. Of course, we would wrap up our beddings and put them all aside uh, nicely during the daytime, especially when people might come to people a mosque. Uh, but um, at, uh, at night, you know, we roll out our sleeping bags, we'd sleep there in, in the mosque. Uh, uh, but then how do we eat? Um, you know, one uh, nice idea would have been to say to the community, okay, we are here as servants of God, bring us some food. <laughs> but no, the, the idea within that mission is that uh, you, you must be self-sufficient and mm -hmm. relying only on God, not on people. Uh, so, so you're building reliance on God through this whole missionary work. And um, uh, so, so you have to cook your own food. So the, typically mosques would have a kitchen. Not every mosque does, but of course we would choose the ones that would have a kitchen. Uh, so that we can go there, cook our own food. So uh, we would gather, let's say we're 10 persons in the group. So we'll sit down for a shura, a, a council meeting, a mutual consultation. Uh, one person is already designated as the emir, as the leader of the whole group. Uh, the leader will be consulting with others. Okay, so who will buy the rations for us? So uh, two persons might be assigned to go buy the rations. Who will do the cooking for us? Two persons might be assigned to do the cooking, maybe the same two persons. Uh, while the cooking is going on, somebody has to be uh, connected to God. That's how this whole group is going to be connected to God, uh, you know, through remembrance of God. Who is going to be assigned uh, for the remembrance of God? So two persons might be assigned just for, for that purpose. That's all they do. They're going to remember God by uh, praising his name, you know, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, glory be to God, God, uh, praise be to God, God is the greatest. Uh, repeating this over and over or reading the Quran or something like this. So, you know, those acts of devotion that will keep the, the group connected with God. And uh, yeah, two persons would want to go out to uh, connect with the community. So they would go visit Muslims home to home, to home and uh, tell them, look, we, we have a group here visiting from XYZ place and uh, we're talking there about God and our responsibilities to God. Uh, about the same kalima that we all believe in, la ilaha illallah, there is no God but God, Muhammad is the messenger of God. We'd like you to come out and be part of that uh, activity, uh, you know, for the three days that we're here. Please come out and, uh, and join us. So we're inviting others to come. And when they come, we're going to preach to them, you know, after one of the prayers. So we're going to assign somebody to do the preaching. And you're right, one of the persons who was doing the cooking Maybe the same person who goes and, and does the speech as well without any, prop, any introduction that celebrates his qualification. He doesn't need any qualification. These are so, such basic points that it is thought that almost any Muslim uh, can, uh, you know, with a little bit of experience with the group, uh, start to speak about the same points. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, during the day, and, uh, as we st staying in the mosque with nothing else to do, no job, no family to look after, um, uh, what are we going to do during the day? So maybe 10 o'clock in the morning for two hours, we have uh, a, a learning session. And in that learning session, we might uh, be studying some of these same points. Um, so by the time one has gone through some of these study sessions, eventually one is equipped to give the talk. So, so far I've said a lot of positive things and like, you can you know, say... Boy Scouts or something, like, well, a, like a, fun, a fun camp uh, yeah, <laughs> in well, some, well, in yeah, some respect. I mean, it, 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 it does involve a certain degree of adventure. I mean, you're going to a new town, maybe you haven't seen that town before and its people and its mosque and all of that. Uh, but it's not there, it's not fun and games. Yes, it's, I know. Uh, it's, you know. So let's say, Dr. Shabir, somebody w was thinking of joining this movement. Uh, what, what advice would you give them? Are there any sort of weaknesses that they should be aware of? Uh, well, yeah, so far we've talked about, uh, you can see how excited am I yes. uh, about it, but, but that doesn't mean that there aren't any weaknesses. I mean, any human movement is going to have some weaknesses. Of God is perfect, human beings are not, and what we devise as human beings will have some drawbacks. And, you know, sometimes we, we don't have that full vision. We, we don't see the whole picture. So uh, because of how the movement began, where it began... It began in 1926. 1926, Canada, almost in, 100 years yes, old. in India, in the region known as Mewat, uh, by a certain scholar, um, Malan Muhammad Elias. Um, and, and yes, it's, it's grown, as you have mentioned, it's now in something like 150 countries, and, and, and with many followers uh, numbering in the millions. Um, so are there some drawbacks? Yes. Um, one drawback is that it does not involve women that much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is a way for women to also go out in, in the missions, um, but you know, they, they stress the 
um, seclusion of women to such an extent that uh, the women's movement will not be seen. Mm. Um, and, 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 you know, with all of the restrictions and so on, one wonders to what extent the women do actually benefit from going out in these, uh, in these missions. Uh, so it's a mostly a male-centered uh, mission. Uh, a lot of things are done by the males, and, um, and the women are usually left at home caring for the family. And sometimes uh, they're left to, with, uh, you know, with insufficient um, attention to all of their needs and the needs of the family and the children to take care of and so on, because the men are psyched to the idea that, yeah, I've got to go out and do this. And then they go out and uh, not enough hindsight of how the home situation will be left uh, behind them. Uh, now, because of their intense devotion to, um, you know, the way, like the stories which are being read. Remember I talked about those two hours of, of learning session each day. Well, one of the books that is being read and was read for a long time is, uh, includes a portion called Stories of the Sahaba. And, and these are stories of companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who lived through very difficult situations where they were being attacked by others who wanted to decimate the Muslim population. They had to arise in, in defense, in, in battles. And some of them, the, the stories of their bravery and heroism and valor in battle and all of that are recounted. And, and their self-sacrifice and how many wounds they bore and how they kept fighting despite the womb. And somebody had his one arm cut off, but he transferred the flag to the other hand, holding it up. Uh, the other hand got cut off, but he held the flag, uh, you know, even with the, uh, with the stubs of his arms remaining and, you know, holding it with his teeth. So, you know, somebody struck with arrow after arrow, but he kept on fighting and so on. So all of this may have uh, um, produced, uh, you know, some Muslims with a mind that says, you know what, I can go out and, you know, sacrifice my body and, um, you know, go out in a sort of a battle nowadays, like, why aren't we doing that? So the movement itself doesn't do that, and, and it's not encouraging that, and it's mm -hmm. against anyone enacting violence against anyone else. The, mm -hmm. the movement itself is thoroughly apolitical. Uh, but some of the adherents, just, just, just as I have emerged from it and I'm doing something different, some people may emerge from it and do something very different. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this way, it is noted that uh, uh, some of the persons who have been implicated in, uh, in modern times uh, with uh, you know, connections to terrorism and so on uh, have been traced back to this movement. Uh, again, the movement doesn't encourage that, but uh, I, I would encourage the leaders to look back at some of the stories that are being read and ask if it's necessary really to uh, have those because you can have the learning session without that part, particular book necessarily. And in fact, the book itself uh, has a lot, a lot of these stories are, you know, hagiography as you mm -hmm. know, people write great stories about their saints uh, and, and the stories are not necessarily true. Not only that, but the book contains many uh, narratives um, of, on other subjects as well. Uh, which are not necessarily authentic. So it's important for them to produce like some authentic books which will be read and, and which will be free of this negative uh, element uh, in it. And indeed, recently they have produced a book called Muntakhab al-Hadith, uh, Muntakhab al-Hadith, something of this nature. So selected hadiths to be read. And uh, that has a greater degree of authenticity than the uh, previous book that I mentioned, but uh, how widely it is being used nowadays, I have not investigated. And, and the book, too, I have not started, studied in great detail um, because by the time this book was introduced, I was out of the movement. I actually bought a copy of the book, mm -hmm. uh, but then I, um, before I could study it, I gave it away as a gift to somebody who is still in, in the movement. All right, we'll leave it at that, Dr. Bear. I can see that you have so much to talk about on the Tabri Um it, it really fires you up. That's really interesting. <laughs> Um, but we'll pick it up another time. Sure. Our videos reach people all over the world. We hope you will seize the opportunity to share in the reward from God. Please support us today. <laughs>